Hello everyone! Uh, I still owe you one game from my chess club championship. Uh, I don't know if you've seen on my social media, I already said that uh, I won the championship with 6 out of 7 and uh, this is my game from the last round. Uh, here you can see my uh, shiny shiny trophy and uh, my opponent in this game is uh, Davor Ivanik. He's a chess colleague, uh, also plays in my, in my chess club and he's known to be a very very solid player he likes you know positional positional games long games uh slow maneuvering and uh, it's, uh he's not, not not an easy opponent to beat definitely and uh before i mean uh, as i won the championship even before starting this game uh i didn't really I didn't really prepare for it or anything, I just, uh, I thought uh, I have the white pieces. I know my opponent is gonna go for the Petrov defenses, he like plays that 90% of the times. So I felt pretty confident. Uh, so let's see this game. And uh, as it, it definitely is my favorite game from this championship, uh, regardless of the result. Uh, I played e4 and he played e5, knight f3 and knight f6. So he, he did go for the Petrov defense. I played knight captures on e5, he played d6, knight f3, and now knight captures on e4. And here I played knight to c3, uh, the, the Nimzovich variation of the Petrov defense. He played knight captures on c3, I played d captures on c3, and uh, I don't know, one of the reasons I, I enjoy this line it, is because it kind of prevents uh, black from developing, developing this light square bishop to g4, for example. Uh, now you can simply kick it away with h3 and he has to go back. If he goes to h5 then queen d5 attacks the bishop and the b7 pawn. Uh, now he has to exchange and after bishop captures queen captures, now you have the bishop pair. Uh, this will, you know, uh, in, in the long run this will prove to be uh, advantageous. So after this d captures on c3, he played knight to c6, uh, bishop to c4, uh, bishop to e7, I castled, he castled, I played rook to e1, he played bishop to g4, and uh, now he's pinning my knight here, he wants to play knight to e5 to attack my knight on f3 and also my bishop on c4. Uh, so I go bishop to f4, not, not allowing him to go knight e5. Uh, he played a6 and uh, here I thought, uh, I mean of course he wants to go b5. Uh, my first idea was to play a4 and then uh, after thinking about it for some time I decided to go bishop to d3 instead. So I played bishop to d3. And uh, here, now if he pushes b5, I have bishop to e4, uh, I can harass the knight on c6, or I can even go for a4 now and, and break this uh, a6 b5 structure. Uh, so after this bishop to d3, he played rook to e8. And uh, now I played h3. Uh, he retreated with the bishop, bishop to e6, and uh, he could have gone for bishop to h5 if he did this. Uh, I was actually considering the capturing uh, on h7, for example, bishop to h5. Now I actually considered bishop captures on h7. And after king captures, knight g5 check. Uh, now bishop captures on g5, queen captures on h5, and now he has to uh, block with bishop to h6. And now bishop captures, pawn captures, queen captures. Uh, this is with check. Uh, he has to move after king h8. Now I can exchange. Uh, and then grab on c7 and uh, I will definitely win at least one more pawn as I'm attacking b7 and d6. Uh, so I'm, al I'm already up three pawns and I will win one more pawn but I couldn't really decide whether whether this was worthy of doing or could I even go for a win here. Uh, even being up like maybe five pawns uh, but uh, I thought I would consider it more deeply if he actually played bishop to h5. Uh, but as he went bishop to e6 uh, and now I played a4. Uh, he played bishop to f6 and now I pushed a5 and I really liked this a5 move. Uh, it prevents him from expanding on the queen side and also, who knows, uh, maybe later if I need I can go rook a4 and maybe bring the rook over to the king side uh, if, if, I, if I need a rook on the king side. Uh, he played king, queen to d7 and uh, here it's a pretty, pretty equal position, there's really, really nothing uh, either of us can do here to gain any advantage. Uh, of course I would like to play something like knight g5 but he can simply exchange and after I capture he can go bishop to f5. Uh, simply now exchange everything and uh, all is well. So after this queen to d7 I decided to play bishop to g5. <clears throat> now he captured it, uh, bishop captures, I played knight captures on g5 and he played h6. Bishop to f5 is also an idea uh, the idea being that after queen to f3, after bishop captures, I can't capture with the c pawn and undouble my pawns because he can simply capture, capture, 
and uh, now push h6. Now the queen is blocking the retreat of my knight to the f3 square. I would have to go knight e4, and now he can simply grab the a5 pawn. Uh, so after this queen to f3, after he captures, I would have to capture with the queen. Uh, and after he stops this threat, for example, g6, push b4, and still it's a, it's a nice position for both white and black. Uh, so after this knight to g5, he decided to go for h6, uh, and I played knight captures on e6. He played rook captures, and uh, I played queen to f3. And here uh, he... Uh, he has to decide what to do. Uh, here he, uh, I, I don't know, when I played queen to f3, I kind of knew that he will definitely double up rooks here uh, on the e file. Although, if he wants to, he can simply capture my rook, rook captures, rook capture, bring the other rook to e8, and, I mean, all is well. Uh, there's really there's really no progress here to be made by either side. Uh, but this was actually my big chance in the game, as he played rook 8 to e8. He doubled up rooks, and I knew this was a mistake. I immediately captured rook captures on e6, uh, because now he has to make a decision. Uh, he can't play rook captures because of bishop to f5. Uh, this uh, wins the exchange. Uh, if he plays f captures, then I have uh, queen to e4, uh, going for h7. And now if he wants to, he can push g5, so the queen guards uh, h7, but now queen to g6, check. And you can't block check, because uh, his rook is hanging on e8. So he would have to play king f8 or king uh, h8, whatever he plays, uh, I can grab the pawn on h6, and I'd have a, I'd have a decent game. Uh, on the other hand, uh, after this queen to e4 move, he could also go for uh, a move like king to f8, but uh, then the king is on f8, and the idea is, of course, rook e1, rook e3, rook f3, uh, but uh, he didn't go for this. Uh, after I played this rook captures on e6, he played queen captures on e6. And it seems now all is well, but uh, this is, this is I think, the only move he missed so far in the game. Uh, I played bishop captures on a6. And now... Uh, this is uh, this is why this is uh, definitely my favorite <laughs> game of the tournament. As I played bishop to a6, uh, I said to myself, "Nice, nice. I'm I'm winning this game. That's uh, like very nice. I mean, I'm gonna win the tournament uh, with seven out of seven. Uh, I mean, there's no way I'm not gonna win this. And uh, you know, uh, but then immediately I I started hearing Josh Waitzkin in my head saying that uh, you know you you have to keep focused at the game if you start uh, thinking about uh, the victory before the game is even over then you're definitely going to lose the game and uh, I considered that and, but I thought nah nah I'm gonna win this game uh, so uh, he didn't capture the bishop of course because then queen captures I'm attacking the c7 pawn the a6 pawn uh, so after this bishop captures he played knight captures on a5. I played bishop captures on b7, he played knight captures, and I played queen captures on b7. So, uh, I'm up a pawn, and uh, I don't know, I, I didn't really see uh, any counterplay uh, that he could uh, produce. I thought I'd simply exchange rooks and then push my pawns to victory. Uh, he played rook to e7, defending the c7 pawn, I brought the queen back, uh, he played rook to e8, and I played uh, b4 now. Uh, we have queen to e5, uh, and now rook to a8. Uh, my idea here, I, I didn't really think about it much. I thought uh, queen and pawn endgame, uh, I'm up a pawn, this, this surely must be winning. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that may be true if, if uh, you just have an extra pawn. If you have an extra doubled pawn, uh, then it's uh, going to be a bit harder. Uh, he played queen e1 check, king h2, and now rook captures an a8. I captured, this is with check. Uh, he plays king to h7, and I play queen to f3 to defend my f2 pawn, and also to attack his f7 pawn. Uh, he played queen e5 check, g2 now, and now queen to e8, uh, guarding his f7 pawn. And here I played c4. I thought, ah, I, I'll, ju I'll just uh, start pushing my pawns. Uh, he played queen e7, and I played b5. Uh, he played g6, and I played king to g2, uh, simply... Uh, I thought about improving my position before I start doing anything. Uh, he played king to g7, doing the same, and uh, here I maybe missed uh, missed a move. I mean, definitely I missed a move. I should have played h4. Uh, simply improving the position further before trying anything, uh, rather than leaving this pawn on h3. Uh, that can be a potential target in the future. So this is, this is what happens uh, when you don't uh, think about uh, moves as much as you should.
So uh, I played queen to b7 here, uh, trying to go for b6, of course, uh, to pin this pawn. Uh, he played queen to e8, and I played uh, queen to d5, now threatening c5. Uh, he played queen back to e7, I repeated queen to b7, uh, couldn't really find any ideas here. He repeated queen to d8, and now I played queen to e4, and uh, again, I, I thought I had uh, a winning strategy here. Uh, I played queen e4 with the following idea. Uh, he played uh, king to g8, uh, I played queen to d3 now, again with the idea of c5, but this is simply to remaneuver my queen to e3. Uh, he played queen to e7, not allowing this, and now I play queen to e3. I offer to exchange queens, and also I'm mining the h6 pawn. So, queen to f8 defending, and now I played queen to f4, and I thought, uh, this is it, now I have him. Uh, I'm pressuring the h6 pawn, the queen must uh, keep uh, on f8 to protect it, uh, or he sh he must waste a move uh, with the king to protect the h6 pawn, and if he does this, then I'm simply going to push c5, and uh, that's it. He can't capture because I captured a c7 pawn, and that's it. Uh, but he simply played queen to e7, and here... Uh, now you see if I capture the h6 pawn, now he simply plays queen to e4, checking me and my queen side pawns are gone. Uh, so after this queen to e7, uh, I decided to go king to f3, simply not allowing this uh, queen e4 check uh, and, uh, you know, improving the position of my king. Uh, he played queen to e1 uh, with the idea of going queen to h1. And uh, this is one of those moments where, for example, this move was, w wasn't... Uh, wouldn't be possible uh, if I played something like h4 in that moment, as now you can see that my h3 pawn is definitely a target. Uh, now, I, I could try s some things, but it's it's not very easy to, to actually uh, convert this extra doubled pawn. Uh, I could try queen to h4, uh, going for, for the h6 pawn and defending my h3 pawn, uh, but he will simply defend it, and after queen d4 check, he will go back. I, I, I can go back with the king, and he can just go back with the queen. So, uh, I, I, didn't really, I didn't really like this, as I did have an extra pawn, and I really wanted to win this game, uh, you know, however. So, I played queen to e3. I allowed him queen to h1 check to grab my h3 pawn. Uh, he played queen h1, I played king e2, and now he played queen captures on h3. And uh, here I saw that I still can't push c5. Uh, the, idea, the idea being that if I push it, uh, then he can just uh, check me all he wants. For example, queen g4 check. Uh, if I move, queen d1 check. If I move, queen f1 check. If I move, queen b1 check. And uh, all, he can check me all around. So after this queen captures on h3, I played queen to e8 check. He went back and I went queen to c7. Uh, queen to c6, again threatening this, the c7 pawn. Uh, but he simply played queen e6 check, and uh, now if I go back, it's, uh, you know, n neither side can make progress, uh, I no longer have an extra pawn, if anything. Uh, I mean, he does have now a, a majority uh, on the queen side, but if he opens up the, pawn, uh, the pawns and I can check his king, then uh, again neither side will be able to make progress. Uh, so I decided to go king to d3, I thought I should go all the way uh, up the board uh, with my king on the queen side and uh, try something that way maybe i had some i had some wild plans of maybe my king can reach like b7 and then i can simply capture with the queen but uh, that's really far, that's really a long plan so queen to f5 check by him i played king to c3 and now he played queen to c5 and here i knew that all my chances uh, for a win were definitely gone uh, but uh, I, don't know, I can still play queen to d7, and uh, again, neither side can make progress. Uh, if he checks me, I, I go d4. If he checks me back, I go c3. He can't never push. He can never push the, the f pawn, and yeah, it's a pretty drawn end game. So I mean, the entire game, especially now that I gave him my h pawn. Uh, so after this queen to c5, uh, he played uh, queen. I played queen to e4. And uh, here I even allowed him to grab my f2 pawn, just, uh, I don't know, I have no idea why I did that, I just wanted uh, something to happen. Uh, so he captured it, and uh, I played queen to d4, now with the idea that if he captures my queen, I will capture with the king, and then my king can go up the board, maybe maybe I, w I will be able to, to win this game. Uh, because I simply didn't want uh, a draw. 
Uh, but to my horror, now he played queen to f6, I totally missed this move and uh, now I saw that, you know, uh, anything I play is just losing for white. Uh, so I played c5 with the idea, again, that if he captures my queen, I can bring my king in. Uh, but of course he captured a pawn, I played queen captures, king captures, and now king to c4. Uh, king to e7, I played king captures on c5, and after king to d7, he's in time to prevent me from uh, bringing my king closer, and now he has a majority of 3 pawns to 1 on the king side. Uh, it's a completely winning endgame for black. So I tried a couple of more moves, as we already played like 3.5 hours, so why not finish it all the way? And here, when he played king to e5, now, now you can see uh, that he's just in time to promote the pawn. Here he gains opposition, and now he just continues, gains another opposition, and here I resign the game. So, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty drawn game, uh, the entire game, and uh, but it took me three and a half hours of uh, <laughs> trying to win... Uh, a pretty much drawn endgame, even though even though I, I was a pawn up, but uh, I don't know. Maybe if I played that h4 move, there wouldn't there would wo that tactic with queen e1 wouldn't be possible. But uh, again, you never know. Uh, a, a, a pawn up, a double pawn up in a queen and pawn endgame, uh, hard to convert. But yeah, uh, a totally deserved victory. I I you know totally uh, played uh, like a like a mad mad like a mad person and uh, i just uh, wanted to win a game that uh, probably couldn't even be won but yeah i won the tournament uh, but this is definitely my favorite game as i want to think i'm gonna learn something from it like don't push a win if there's no there's no win in the position uh, but it's hard to say i always say that and then i always go uh, try to push for a win so yeah uh that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it um uh, yeah as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. I have uh, uh, two tournament games tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, so if any of them will be interesting, maybe I'll show them as well. So thank you all, and I will see you soon.